Hello, I'm going to talk about something I learned from the world that I'm going to talk a little bit about curriculum development and how um, it's a concept I learned from the world and how that I hope will um, benefit the church. So, um, not to withstand that there is a huge divide between the secular and the spiritual, that there are things that you do in the world and there are things that you that had are a um, that are a, um, a benefit that are a benefit uh, uh, to those outside the church. Then there are those things that are a benefit to those to those inside the church. I think that is a false dichotomy. It is a dualism that must be um, in the fought against where and ever possible. Now, I'm not saying that everything we learn from the world is a benefit to the church. Some, some ideas, some systems are not to be um, used within the church, but there are some concepts that I think that are not just church thing, uh, that are not just world thing, but can benefit the church. I'm going to show you one idea that I learned um, that I believe is a, a beneficial and a, a creating of um, leaders in a, a curriculum development. Um, and it's a concept called a um, it's a concept called a, a modularizing. Um, if you are aware of the technology world, you know it. You know that term. Take, for instance, I have a computer. Everybody has a computer. This is your computer. Right? That's your computer. Let's just say that's your computer. Well, there are wires all over the place. I can either, one, look at all those wires as individually, as one group, or I can, within every electro, every system is subsystems subsystem here, subsystem here, and they all work together to make my system work. So, this is very evident in programming. As you can, uh, you have modular programming. Instead of making long code, I make subcodes. And that actually helps things run better. Um, so, think for instance this church. Church, right? Um, and there is a vision that everybody wants to get accomplished, vision and mission, everybody wants to get accomplished. Say for instance this is one system. This is two, another system. This is one system. This is one system. Right? Take, for instance, this is children's ministry. This is adult ministry. This is youth ministry. This could be preaching. I, 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 um, this is worship. These are all systems that are meant to accomplish the goal. Once again, this is an idea that I did not learn in the church. So, the question is, and then you put, you just isolate this one thing, children's ministry. and you just focus on it. Is it accomplishing the mission and vision of this church? And it's thinking of things modularly. You don't take the big stack, you take them, um, you focus on children. Same thing in everyone. So, take for instance leaders, developing leaders. Do we have systems set up with, take for instance, children's ministry, 
that are setting them up to one day be a leader. Are we doing that? And if we are, what does that look like? And if we aren't, what do our children's ministries look like? What do our youth, adults, so so many things. The problem is that we start to think about developing adults, I mean developing leaders as adults. We, we don't even think of the idea that a someone in youth ministry could be a leader. Let's isolate preaching. How does preaching facilitate your mission and vision? How does it create leaders in the church? Once again, looking at this stuff modularly. So I started to toss an idea. So I started to think about it in the realm of curriculum development. Tech, for instance, you want to, we want, typically in seminary, I think they use this long approach for code. They just look at, boom, you do all this, you get done, and you will <clears throat> then have a course done. You do so many courses, you'll get your Master of Divinity, Master of Theology, Master of Religion. Um, but our churches are not set up. I don't think, to develop leaders. Um, a case point, small groups. We normally pick up a curriculum, but we don't look at how, the, how are the objectives developing leaders? How are they accomplishing? Are they developing leaders or are they de developing followers? So, as I get into this more and more, um, I developed, I made a curriculum, and then when I looked at it, I was like, wait a second, I can pull this out. I, I, I can use what I learned in, in my engineering days and, and use it here to do modular curriculum development. Um, so you have this master curriculum. Let, well, I want to show you how, what, what this looks like. You will normally have a description of a course. You will have objectives in the course. These don't change. These don't change. You shouldn't Uh, the description, this is going to funnel this in. A sub, an example. So here's the description. This is your block. I, I mean, this, and what's going to make up your description is your objectives. And each objective, you get an accomplished in some lesson. Now, if I pull, so when, so actually the objectives have, have assignments in them, have, have, have lessons. I, there are things I want to get accomplished. For instance, I want them to um, define revelation in the doctrine of the word. I want them to define revelation, define special revelation. What is the difference between special revelation and general revelation? So as we're getting here, <clears throat> so now our objectives can be actually, these are actually sub, which also have lessons that are coordinated with it. You start, and in my, um, in my syllabus that I created, <clears throat> Um, I use each week that they have, they're going through the, um, the Westminster in the Catechism, Westminster Shorter Catechism, and also they're going through the Foundation Series by um, the Ligonier Ministries, and they are also going through 
One systematic theology book. I don't have them work through a whole bunch. I got Horton. Uh, you can pretty much choose a, any. <clears throat> and this is using, and the actual syllabus is using a template format. Every week you're talking about something that is, whether it's revelation, special revelation, inspiration, inerrancy, solo scriptura, uh, you're talking about each one of these. So each one of these lessons can be broken down, and, and, and you pull that out, you pull it out, so, for instance, you have the Westminster Shorter Catechism. You can do the Heidelberg Catechism, you can do any catechism, really, or that you can do the Umnacity Catechism. So, and then you do what I call reverse catechizing. What that means is that instead of starting at the question and going on to the answer, which will reveal the verses, you do it backwards. You start at the verse, get the answer, then show, then slowly develop the question what's inside that verse. I, what you're doing there, that you are actually a, an exegeting the student to pull out this question. So, next, uh, next they start living out their faith, they start doing some stuff, and you take them through the foundation series. Once they get that done, they move on a little bit, then you hit them with a solid systematic theology. Um, and here they got questions. There's really no writing here, you just dialogue one to one. That's how you do your evaluating. Here they would be maybe filling out questions. You still may be doing, but you're kind of getting them to answer questions in their own writing. Here, you've got them writing papers. Probably one, two, two big papers. They would also still do questions and assessments, but you're taking them through that. So you're slowly building these concepts. You're actually building leaders. You're actually building leaders. Um, once again, this is a concept I did not learn in, in the church, but I learned outside. It's, so this is a type of concept that can be brought in. There, there are things that we learn from the world that can be brought into the church to actually improve the way things are done. Um, and thinking of programs modularly thinking of our church programs, thinking of our church systems modularly, can really help us to run to run a no, more efficient church program. Thank you for your time, and then if you have any questions or what this looks like, send me, an e uh, send me a message, and then the, I will get back to you. Thank you very much. Bye.